Merry Christmas and an Happy New Year. It's almost 2015, but we're going to be talking about Bebo. Welcome to another episode of App Today. This week we'll be discussing Line and their new food, music, messaging and mobile payment services, as well as new photo filters you should expect to get familiar with. We'll also be introducing you to the most comprehensive guide on North Korea ever written, which just so happens to be an app, and presenting our top list of apps to enhance Christmas, while also taking a look at the latest in rapification technology. Yes, rapification technology, Luke. But that's not all. We'll also be discussing how human rights violations happening in both North Korea and China relate to mobile devices and the internet you use in two very different ways. Hello, I'm Cameron. And I'm Luke. We're here from Free Deal Studio, keeping you up to date with the latest app news and releases. This is App To Date. And first, we have Chirp, the app that uses songs to share. We've discovered a really, really cool new app this week called Chirp, which uses sound to transfer information, including photos, web pages, contacts, and even messages like the one you've just received, Luke, through sound from one mobile device to another. And we're going to be using it in today's show, aren't we? So if you go to the App Store right now and search Chirp and download the app so you're ready for the chirps that we're going to be putting out in this broadcast. Now, even Topshop used Chirp to distribute images at one of their events in Regent's Parks earlier this year. And Topshop's Oxford Circus flagship store in London has been outfitted with a Chirp and Twitter garden, which I think is pretty cool, where shoppers can walk through to receive image transmissions to their devices via sound, or they can even tune in with a headset provided by Topshop themselves. How cool is that? It's pretty cool, yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, and get this. Right, a Canadian radio station, CBC, have gone a step further by running the coolest competition I think I've ever heard of using Bitcoin and Chirp, where one of their listeners received $50 over the airwaves by using Chirp to decipher a cryptographic code. And this is believed to be the first known transmission of the digital currency by a public radio station ever. Yes, as a world first. And we're going to be the world's second, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to hopefully be the first to put out on a podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we've made our own chirp. What's that, R2? You're linking me to our website. <laughs> so, Luke, I understand that Bebo may be back from the dead and you have some news for us today. Yeah, former social networking site Bebo is back. For those who don't know, Bebo is a social network that dwarfed Facebook and overtook MySpace's user base with 10.7 million users. At its time, it was a sort of bridge between the highly customizable MySpace and the not so customizable Facebook, although MySpace has gone that way now anyway, so we kind of lost a bit of fun there, really, didn't we? I, I remember MySpace looking like someone had kind of thrown a paint bucket at it and a bunch of code and it just scrambled. It. I remember trying well, to, people customising MySpace. Yeah, the thing was, people spent so long customising MySpace pages, and people actually ran business where they would customise MySpace pages for people and code it for them, and then they just decided one day, oh, we're not going to be doing that anymore. They shut it off, uh, and now there's a whole bunch of these redundant pages that are just full of tons and tons of code that don't actually activate anything on the website, <laughs> which is... Brilliant, just brilliant. Yeah, surreal to say the least. Now I heard that Bebo was bought for a huge amount by AOL back in the day. Yeah, after its initial success all those years ago, uh, with you know custom skins and sharing love, it was sold to AOL for, get this, $850 million. Uh, and then it crashed and burned until eventually it got taken offline August the 7th, 2013, due to bankruptcy. Whoa. Well, the former owners and creators of Bebo have actually bought the company back for $1 million, which is some serious gross profit. Um, <laughs> they've actually decided to rebuild the whole thing from scratch. That's a damn clever move by Bebo. That is an incredible move. <laughs> uh, I'm sure the executives there are kind of having a little chuckle to themselves at AOL's expense. So is the app any good, Luke? Because I know you've been testing it extensively this week. Yeah, I highly recommend you check out the Bebo app. Uh, at the moment, it's free and it's up on the App Store. The app is essentially an instant messenger, so you need to invite some friends too to get started. Or you could add me, I'm Bessent TUD. Unlike other messenger apps, the whole focus is a fun experience where you create an avatar and then chat and the avatar will act out what you're talking about based on hashtags in the conversation. That's pretty clever. So they're actually animated. Yeah, so if you say, oh, do you want to go swimming? 
just put a hashtag before swimming and your avatar will start swimming. <laughs> it's, so, a, it's a pretty fun... Have you tested the limits of these hashtags? I have, actually. I've you put, have. You can put all kinds of different drug references as well in there if you'd like to. Uh, so Shady that. stuff by me, bro. <laughs> I know. I like, I like that that was one of the first ones they put in as well. It was like <laughs> beta mode and they had like heroin on there or something. <laughs> But yeah, it's a lot of fun controlling your avatar and chatting with your friends. As I say, it's far from a serious messaging app, so I have my doubts and concerns when it comes to like encryption and safety. But what I will say is the creators of Bebo do actually know what they're doing. Like they, they actually had one of the most popular networking sites of all time. So your personal data, not that they ask for much of it, uh, it should be pretty secure. Yeah, I mean, they have a hell of a lot of experience, don't they? And I guess we kind of need Bebo will be back in some form or another after a while. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they dropped hints at it for the last sort of six months, I think, now. Uh, before that, it was obvious that AOL had sold them and stuff like that, and this website was just a complete blank canvas with, uh, you know, we'll be back soon kind of thing. And then they announced they were going to do three apps, I think it was originally. Uh, I can't say that's a fact, but I, I think they announced they were going to do three apps, so I, I expect we're going to get another couple back soon. We'll be keeping our eyes peeled for that one. Yeah, definitely. Here, however, is one of the things that concerns me. Uh, on the homepage, there's a message that says old photos will be available starting 31st of Jan. What? <laughs> yeah. So here's the problem. I don't have my old Bebo login. Uh, and the fact barely anybody does. In fact, they insist you create a new login because they're very aware of the fact that nobody has the Bebo login anymore. <laughs> so to sign up, you can actually use your old email address, which means you obviously can't log into the old account. They must have deleted the old accounts. Which means that these photos... They're fair game. They're fair game. They're public. Like, who owns these photos now? Because there's no way I can set the privacy on these photos. And I don't want it to be public photos of me when I was 14 years old having my first beer. You know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> We've got a professional image to uphold it. Yeah, I don't well, know who Bebo think they are. They're kind of <laughs> winding me up now. That's that's my only concern, and I'll be emailing them in the week uh, to try and get uh, a little bit of feedback on that, and we'll come back to the story. Yeah, let's see if we can find out how you can claim ownership of your pictures and get them removed if they are terrible. Now, I remember this... The kind of the height of Bebo was the kind of the, the scene kid phase. Yep. When everyone was dyeing their hair crazy colours and wearing like white skinny jeans, which isn't a good look. And I'd rather that that didn't come to light for me or anyone else. <laughs> it's pretty embarrassing, you know. Yeah. It's pretty embarrassing. So we'll we'll for find that out. boy for life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, as I say, at Besant TUD, add me up. And speaking of retired social networks and chats, uh, Samsung have confirmed that chat-on messaging services will be shut down as of February 2015. So Luke, I mean, considering this is for Android, being with Samsung, why are we covering this today? Well, this doesn't exactly relate to the iOS theme, but it does lead us into a very interesting thought. With everyone so keen on making their own messaging app, the market is becoming crowded and saturated. It points out, are these companies doing as well as they seem to be making out that they're doing? Chat On claims to have over 100 million users last year, and despite that, it appears that almost nobody's using it. They're shutting doors. Whereas WhatsApp claimed only 600 million active users, and it makes you wonder how accurate that figure is. I think that's a really good point, actually, Luke. I mean, we've discussed it with overvaluations, and I mean, we know that how iffy analytics can be. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's on a small scale. I mean, we're talking globally with multiple devices. I mean, as you say, WhatsApp is only six times bigger, which you might go, oh, that's six times bigger, that's huge. But they're shutting the doors on this service because no one's using it. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty scary prospect that if you have 100 million users, you do not have a viable business. The story first emerged in Korea Times, who said Samsung officials had claimed that the company plans to close the instant messaging service, restructure unprofitable business, and improve profitability. Uh, an official was quoted as saying, chat on isn't a business that can show improvement in the future. So that's interesting. It's, it's interesting that a company so powerful as Samsung would say that they can't make money out of a messaging service. Or maybe they're just focusing their attention on other messaging services they're working on. But, you know, to get rid of 100 million users overnight is a big cut. That's got to be worth some money. Yeah, it's Surely. Worth some. I'm surprised they haven't sold it on, to be honest, yeah. with that user base. And speaking of Korea, are you travelling to North Korea anytime soon, Cameron? Well, if I am, I have a travel app which is just perfect. The travel app by Uniquely.Travel is now offering what it claims to be the most comprehensive guide to North Korea ever written. This app aims to show you just how much of North Korea is actually open to foreigners. Why not? Let's encourage some tourism to the lesser known parts of the world. 
why not open it up as a tourist destination? I mean, I know you need to get kind of a government sanctioned visit, but it is possible. I think it's a really clever move actually, because the number of travel apps on the market is increasing every day, like chat apps, like pretty much everything. And it's making it more and more difficult for travel companies to stand out. But Uniquely Travel may have hit the nail on the head here by focusing on guides to controversial destinations like North Korea, which is in very much the same way that Vice who are so famous and successful now did for their magazine and documentary series. I don't know anyone who goes online regularly who hasn't heard a voice or at least seen one episode. It goes back to what we were saying last week about the morality of technology is that North Korea is a is considered a dangerous place to just be walking around kind of thing. It's like giving people a travel guide to Palestine and then just going off you go. It's it's not something that's going to be taken lightly and I think they should really look into the responsibility they're taking on board when they say that they're going to develop a travel app for a country that's considered uh, an outsider. And next is my favourite app of the week, which is absolutely awesome, and it's turned Luke Besson into an OG rapper. Thanks to the Auto Rap app. And this thing apparently uses awesome rapification technology to auto-tune your voice and map your speech syllables to a beat. I haven't seen or heard anything like this ever, it's just crazy. Uh, you can choose from among different scores and beats put together by popular artists and superstar rappers such as Eminem, 50 Cent, Lil Wayne uh, and Chris Brown, providing that you have earned enough plays to unlock them. And now this is the only downside of the app. And the plays is basically a credit feature which requires you to spend credits to use the many songs by the rappers Luke's just mentioned. Um, and if you don't want to pay, the only option is to gather credits by downloading sponsored apps, which is a little bit annoying and does somewhat distract from the awesomeness of this fantastic app. It's, a, it's an incredibly good business model by these people. However, I would say I don't particularly condone many other apps doing it. I don't particularly condone them doing it because it's very, very frustrating to have blocked content in this sort of freemium way. Yeah, and I mean, the, the free version that we've been using that kind of randomly assigns you to music does sound amazing. We're yeah. gonna play one right now. And if anyone else wants to download this app and tweet us a link to their SoundCloud of their apps, Providing there's no explicit content. Exactly. We'll play them on next week's show because we just think that'd be great. Yeah. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, everyone. It might almost be two and a bit people. We're going to be talking about Bebo. Bob talk to another so Matt and Matt. This is where we'll be discussing the line and then the food music, messaging, and robot service payment app, as well as all the new photo features you should expect and get familiar with the two and a bit Slowly driving changes into stuff. The fact that there's a black market and people can buy my movies or music from my book will have a big impact. One day they may even hear my raps, my raps, my raps. So we've mentioned North Korea, we've mentioned rapping, uh, and now we've mentioned social media. So how about a North Korean defector turned rapper now using social media to spread awareness of human rights violations in North Korea? Yes, you heard me correctly. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> Right, so North Korean defector turned rapper Chang Kyung Haihu. That is an amazing that pronunciation. Was, well yeah, done. That was pretty good, thank you. Who escaped North Korea with his family when he was a child, has been working with the Citizens Alliance of North Korean Humanitarian Rights, uh, NKHR, to answer questions about life in North Korea. Now, Luke, I'm pretty sure you have a quote with us from this guy, um, this guy Kang. Yeah, I sure do. He says, um, I don't have any big hopes in the leadership but I have hopes in the younger generations slowly driving changes in society. The fact that there is a black market and people can buy movies or music from abroad will have an impact. One day they may even hear my raps. That's pretty amazing, to be honest, and I think it's a great example as to why anonymizing technology and strong laws protecting privacy are so important. Deep web onion sites, or even the black market, as Kang suggests, that could be ran using Bitcoin may be vital for exposing North Koreans to changing to, you know, outside media and help gradually change the nature of the entire country. Kang also said that he thinks the biggest problem is that the international community still doesn't know enough about North Korea or its refugees and that the crisis is not as visible as the ones in Syria or Palestine, for example. Um, and he recommends screening movies uh, such as the South Korean film Crossing to as many people as possible to kind of raise awareness. For those of you who don't mind subtitles, the film 
The Crossing has been described as the most powerfully moving story which follows the journey of a North Korean man as he illegally leaves the country to find medicine for his sick wife. And what's more is that the film is actually based on true events and aims to be a genuine representation of life for the average North Korean citizen. Where on earth are we going to hear about a Korean film like this? I mean, it's social media. Twitter is excellent for sharing information quickly and I mean it's been great for protesters and great for human rights campaigners. And if you do want to find out more about the defector turned rapper Kang, you can follow him through the Citizens Alliance for North Korean Human Rights Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash NK Human Rights and there's a tweet and we'll do a chirp. And talking of movies, we've got a really great recommendation for those of you who aren't really fans of, of subtitles and so won't be watching The Crossing. And the film we'd personally like to recommend is called Men, Women and Children. Now the film focuses on a group of teenagers and their parents while they struggle with all the different ways general internet technology, which includes smartphones and mobile apps, has changed not just their communication but their relationships, their sense of normality and their sense of self-image. And there's a great scene in this film with a couple sitting in bed playing the Scrabble app friends with words while quite amusingly not actually saying a single word to one another all night and I think it's really highlighted kind of the, these weird situations we're finding ourselves in because of technology. Yeah although situations like that are surreal I feel like it's becoming to come a bit of a cliche to actually talk about it in art forms like I think there's this uh, there's a few works by Banksy recently and I've just seen them and I thought these are just a cliche now I get it it's taken over our lives but it appears no one's doing anything about it other than creating really cliched artworks. Well, let's make million dollar artwork and films out of it instead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, he's capitalised upon it in a, in a great way, I guess, if he's not... You're not very good at software development, you can always do a pun about how society is controlled by apps. <laughs> uh, now, going back to human, now, going back to human rights abuse, I'm sure by now you've all seen the leaked footage from the Apple factory in China. Now the BBC's Panorama programme sent undercover reporters to the Pegatron factories on the outskirts of Shanghai where it's claimed to have uncovered poor treatment of workers and a breach of standards on workers' hours. The BBC report alleged that workers fell asleep during 12 hour shifts on the iPhone 6 production line and were made to work 18 days in a row after repeatedly denied requests of a day off. What's more, poor conditions in Chinese factories were highlighted in 2010 when 14 workers killed themselves at Apple's largest supplier, Foxconn. And now Apple is investigating its supply chain after the discovery of a disturbing cluster of leukemia deaths among young workers at the Pegatron factory in China, where millions of its iPhones are made. At least 13 workers in their late teens and early 20s have been diagnosed with leukemia after falling sick at a massive factory in Shenzhen since 2010. Five have died and at ages that doctors say cases of blood cancer are rare. Families and labour welfare groups believe the leukaemia was caused by exposure to chemicals used to clean electrical panels and say that many more workers could have been affected. Two of these chemicals, benzene, which is a carcinogen, and N-hexane, which can cause nerve damage, will no longer be used in cleaning agents or degreasers at the facilities. They added that young workers who fall sick with leukaemia are dismissed and denied continuing medical coverage. Bankrupting families as they desperately pay for treatment. Chen Fing, whose son, Yi Long, is now in the advanced stages of leukaemia, claims seven to eight workers a year from the same factory were diagnosed and admitted to hospital. Ying Long's family could no longer afford his medical bills. They said, we asked for help from the factory, but they said, it's not our fault, it's your disease. Mrs Cheng said, by then, she had discovered that there were many other workers from Foxconn being treated for leukaemia at the same time in the hospital and that there were seven to eight people from Foxconn who caught leukemia that year alone. She said that a group of them had protested outside the factory gates, demanding to see management, but were threatened unless they left. I mean, this is, this is absolutely terrible, absolutely terrible. I mean, I've had a look at these chemicals and some other components that Apple are actually using in the manufacture of iPhones, and they cause all kinds of problems. I mean, there's some of the materials being used has been compared to asbestos, and that includes nanofiber tubes. I mean, these are basically microscopic needles that these poor people are breathing in. And I heard that 
People were, were bleeding from their noses profusely before being, you know, rushed to hospital. And they're basically told that, oh, well, it's, it's your fault. And I know Apple aren't directly responsible as such because they have to outsource the manufacturing somewhere. And I mean, that's gonna be in China just simply for cost purposes. But the fact that this is happening and we've got Tim Cook kind of happy-go-lucky, oh, I'm the new Apple guy. Um, and people are, well, they're dying. Yeah. People are dying and it needs to be sorted out and very quickly. You know? At the end of the day, the whole thing is just a huge hypocrisy. We bring out all these laws and employment rights and human rights over here. But the corporations don't care, they just take it abroad. Exactly. exactly. That's the biggest problem that we have. Yeah, That's I mean, one of the biggest problems we have in the technology industry is the exploitation of people because they're not on home soil. Anyway, let's cheer ourselves up with apps to enhance Christmas. With the chaos of Christmas on the way, you're going to be needing all the help you can get. So we've put together a little list of the best apps to enhance your Christmas. And we'll be starting with the Witch Your Rights app. This app is a mobile guide to consumer rights that will arm you with all you need to know in a fight against retailers. That's from dealing with faulty goods to returning unwanted Christmas gifts. All very important skills to have this time of year. The app is nice and simple and definitely what it says on the tin. So Luke, have you ever returned anything that you've received as a gift? No, I have no anecdotes to fit that. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, that's oh, funny. <laughs> Unfortunately, between the two of us, we have no anecdotes to fit that exact circumstance, but it does happen. It does happen, but you know, Obviously the local customer service sector is doing incredibly well, so Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> uh, letters to Santa Claus. Letters to Santa Claus is a really cute little app that lets kids write to Father Christmas and he'll actually get a response. And there's been some quite funny comments in the review section from some clearly older kids who have downloaded the app themselves and spammed Santa just to cry fake. So I'd recommend you supervise your kids on this app uh, to make sure they don't do the same thing. So download it on your own device, let your kids write a little Christmas message to Santa, um, and then wait for the reply and show them, because I mean, I think it'd be nice. Yeah, so while, while it's not perfect, the app does definitely make a nice idea. Uh, one of those reviews you were saying. Uh, this is pretty funny, this is, this is, this was the best review I, I actually found. It starts with the title, it's so fake. And I quote, it's probably not even Santa who's writing back to you. Every time I get a letter from Santa, it's the same thing over and over. If you make the mistake of getting this horrible app, just do what I did. Delete the app or write to Santa saying, hey, I'm starting to think that you aren't even the one sending these letters. And see what he says. It will be the same thing. I'm 10 years old almost and I learned my lesson to never get an app that looks like it was created by a five-year-old. Two words, stupid app. <laughs> so we've got a disgruntled preteen here. <laughs> yeah, it's either somebody who's grown up trying to do a prank or it's actually some kid who's a proper smart owl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, the app looks pretty good. Yeah. The letters sort of got on this nice parchment in handwritten text. So, uh, Yummy Christmas. Yeah, our next one is Yummy Christmas. And Yummy Christmas is a cooking app with very simple Christmas recipes designed especially for children. So, I'm, I mean, I'm talking in the Nutella sandwich type recipes here, Luke, uh, but the simplicity of the recipes is kind of where the beauty lies, actually, because the app is suitable for children four plus, which is great. Yeah, it means I can actually cook something that's on the cookbook. <laughs> I struggle with cookbooks all my life, but a Nutella sandwich, I reckon I can just about rustle one of them up. Uh, finally, we have one of my favourites and one of Cameron's favourites. I think this is amazing, it really is amazing. Kringle, the proof of Santa video app. Uh, the new mobile app that lets you bring Santa to life right in your living room. By choosing from a range of pre-made clips, including Santa enjoying your cookies and milk, uh, Santa searching for your gifts, and Santa checking to see if you're on the good list. You can superimpose Santa onto your video. So let's say you've recorded on your iPhone a little scene of your beautiful Christmas decorations and presents in a pile. You can take that video, superimpose Santa into the image through the app really simply and show your kids in the morning proof that Santa has actually been. I think it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and it would definitely enhance any kid's Christmas. And there's a really cute video of kids completely freaking out to these videos on YouTube. So I highly recommend you check that out. And I also think this is a, an amazing use of green screen technology. It's really innovative to combine this with an app. And it reminds me actually of our 12 apps of Christmas video, which you've probably seen the famous Luke in by now. 
And talking of celebrities, we've got some celebrity apps. <laughs> Fantastic. Having already mentioned Tom Hanks's Hanks Writer app and Boris Johnson's Think Like Churchill app this month, uh, we figured and thought that it would be a good time to show a few more apps endorsed by celebrities. So if you're viewing an interactive pleasure, these are the apps we've selected. Brian Cox's Wonders of Life, Bear Grylls' Bear Essentials, and Stephen Hawking's Snapshots of the Universe. So we'll be starting with Brian Cox's Wonders of Life. This is a scientific app based on the show from the BBC with great video and interactive sections that help you learn the scientific basis for life as we know it. You'll love it if you like the documentary, with tons of photographic, video, and interactive content to explore. So is the app actually like, you know, narrated or orchestrated in some way by Brian Cox, or is it just endorsed? It's actually narrated by him, yep. He acts as your guide as well as your narrator as you explore the app. Um, and I have a bit of advice if you do download the app. Follow along with the story as it is intended by using Brian's tool, rather than just browsing around freely. Because otherwise, the narration completely falls apart, which is arguably the best part of the app in regards to you know, presenting all this interesting information. Uh, next up, we have uh, Bear Grylls, Bear Essentials. Bear Essentials is a wilderness survival handbook presented by British celebrity adventurer Edward Bear Grylls. The app's 18 chapters cover everything from how to start a fire and tie useful knots, to choosing the right equipment, finding shelter, tracking, hunting, and first aid. Better drink my own. <laughs> Third off, Stephen Hawking's Snapshot of the Universe. This app, designed specifically for your iPad, teaches users the fundamentals of space through mini games and video explanations from Hawking himself. Players can even learn about G-Force with Einstein, yes they've included an animated Einstein in the game, put planets into orbit and come to grips with the theory of relativity. <laughs> now speaking of universal importance, Instagram. Uh, Instagram finally launched five new filters. Uh, it's the first they've released in two years. They haven't released any since Mayfair and Willow in 2012. That was in December 2012. Uh, this comes one week after Instagram was announced as officially having a larger user base than Twitter. They said that it is to take advantage of the new image quality that the smartphones can compensate. So why do you think they haven't released any since 2012? Do you think they're worried that they'll take away from its simplicity and kind of you know, over feature the app? Uh, well, I think that more than anything, they're worried they're gonna uh, you know, saturate the market. At the moment, there's a 100,000 photo filter apps. That's, I've not done the research there, but I can just tell you that's how many there are. There are so many photo filtering apps, it's ridiculous. And they're built in now to Facebook, they're built into Twitter, they're built into uh, a Tumblr, anything that you want to upload. They're even in your phone, built into iOS. So I think it just comes from them not wanting to overdo it with the the uh, whole filters thing. Yeah, they don't want to complicate the filters market. Yeah, I mean, Grid.io is the world's first uh, artificially intelligent built websites which contain website-wide filters. So, I mean, filters are even being applied to entire websites now, automatically. I mean, it's, it, you're right, it is crazy. People have a kind of a filter addiction. I think the only thing they really need to improve on at Instagram is their pushing policy. I want to automatically be able to send images to Instagram but I suppose that the reason they've done that is that they want people to manually use the app, unlike Twitter, which is like 40% pushed content and marketing and uh, bots now, essentially. Uh, so I, I guess I can understand that point of view from them. Uh, Instagram, of course, is owned by Facebook, who themselves have just bought out an automatic image enhancing feature uh, when photos are uploaded via mobile phones. The update to Instagram app, which is 6.4.0, will be available starting Wednesday on the iOS App Store and the version for Android 6.12.0 is available via Google Play. So Luke, you've got some information about this Nokia Microsoft line yeah. mashup. <laughs> so there's a lot going on between the three of these companies at the moment. So Microsoft have removed third party Snapchat add-ons on its store only one month after Snapchat said that they would permanently lock accounts for using them, which seems fair enough, you know, to protect Snapchat's users and whatnot and uh, protect Microsoft's user base as well. But that's not all they've been up to this week. Microsoft have also sold Nokia's Mixed Radio to Line. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Mixed Radio, it began as a free music streaming bundle with Nokia Lumia range uh, using Windows Phone devices. 
Line is actually a Japanese messaging service with over 170 million active users, which as we discussed earlier doesn't seem to mean anything anymore, and uh, about 560 million overall users. So they're, they're a pretty big deal out there. Line are currently looking into providing a complete entertainment platform, including music streaming, ce celebrity following, and gaming. They say that Line will be releasing Line music soon, but it will not be mixed radio. Mixed radio will remain, but it will be taken off as a preload from the Windows Phone devices. So what does this mean then, Luke? Mixed Radio are currently significantly behind the market leaders here. Spotify, Deezer, Pandora, Beats Music, Radio, anyone you care to name to mention, really. But soon it will be non-exclusive, so it will be taking itself out to the Android and iOS market. And that's what most media channels are saying that the reason for the acquisition is. So do you believe that is the genuine reason for this acquisition? No, I think you could tell by the tone of my voice there. <laughs> I don't agree. I think it's great, and what they'll probably do is correct. They'll probably roll out to the iOS and Android market. But what they've actually bought themselves here is a pre-existing set of contracts of major music labels, so they don't actually have to put in the legal legwork it takes to set up one of these services from scratch. Uh, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but that's just my opinion on it, and I think that's probably what they're going to do. If they're going to release Line Music and keep Mixed Radio as well, I... I I think they're probably just going to push the one that has the most brand recognition, which is Line Music, obviously. In fact, this week it was announced that Line has a partnership with Sony Music Entertainment and Avex Digital uh, to launch Line Music, with uh, Sony and Line both owing 40% of the company and Avex Digital owning 20%. Uh, luckily, you can pay for all of this using their new mobile payment business, Line Pay. Are you kidding? They, they've, <laughs> sorry, they've set up a mobile payment business as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, this is what they're going for. They're going for absolutely everything, it appears. They're, they're going for lots. So this is Line Pay, which is supposed to be coming out this winter, but they haven't really got much time left on that one. Uh, but you could also be enjoying dinner with that because you can use their payment service to pay for a delivery from Line Wow, which will be their <laughs> food delivery service coming out next year. Well, personally, I think it's a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> this diversification taken too far. You know, they're going to be the jack of all trades and... The loser at all. I don't know. They could end up like Google, where they just have everything for no reason. Well, <laughs> military technology. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But anyway, I really have to hurry up with this article. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, staying with Nokia and Microsoft, it appears that Microsoft and Nokia have actually fallen out about this. They've, set, they've sold the music streaming service, and now Nokia says that it will no longer be updating Hear Maps for Microsoft. No surprise, really. The head of Hear Mobile Development said, now we are developing applications on the basis of realistic market. <laughs> oh, <laughs> scorcher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> according, to, according to NDTV Gadgets, the decision comes as a follow-up to the Microsoft Nokia deal, which was completed in April this year, and saw Nokia retain the telecommunications and services business while selling the handset businesses. As part of the deal, Nokia will not be using the same brand name on their mobile products until December the 31st, 2015. That's some pretty crazy news there, Luke. So that's some pretty interesting developments between the three of them, between Line, Nokia and Microsoft. Uh, but just to finish off the show, because this has been a hell of a crammed show, <laughs> uh, I just want to throw it out there that Google have released an update which incorporates over 100 new activities to its Google Fit, which includes skiing, Biathlon, skating, volleyball, boxing, cricket, dancing, and even kite surfing. Which is pretty impressive, to be honest. Uh, you know, a hundred new sports. As well as coming support for Android Wear, it comes with a new experimental step detection for walking when you are disconnected from your phone. So this is some kind of digital pedometer. <laughs> it's something else, really, isn't it? Incredible. But I look forward to seeing all the developments on that front, and we'll keep you up to date as the developments come in. We will I be. have been Luke Besant. And I have been Cameron Norris. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, at iOS App News 24. And this has been another ad-free episode, so don't forget to check out our website, which we will be chirping, and there will also be a link in the description below, where you can sign up for a weekly newsletter, where we'll send you all the links you need. You won't even need to click them and bookmark them from the show description. That was a terrible description of what I would like you to do. <laughs> <laughs> Have a Merry Christmas, everybody, and we'll see you just before the new year. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.
you get everyone. It might almost be two thousand good people. We're going to be talking about me. Like, Welcome talk to another episode of Apple Play. This is where we'll be discussing the line and then food, music, messaging, and mobile service payment, app, as well as all the new photo features you should expect and get familiar with. Two thousand good people. So we've mentioned North Korea and we've mentioned rap and we've mentioned social media. So how about the North Korean defector turned rapper and now using social media to spread awareness of human rights violations in North Korea? Korea. North Korean defector turned rapper. Shun Hai Hai escaped North Korea with his family who've just left the chop has been working with the citizens alike for North Korean human rights. The NKH asked was fresh questions about life in North Korea. He was quoted the same. I don't have any big hopes in the leadership, but I have hopes in young generations to slowly drive and change this into stuff. The fact that there is a black market and people can buy my movies or music from my will have a big impact. One day they may even hear my raps, my raps, my raps.